everyone. This is the Multiplex Funjet 2. And the way I see it, it's basically a mini version of my new 3D jet, the SAB Lizard. But it doesn't look like it yet. I do have my work cut out for me. So if I'm going to make this piece of foam look like that, I'm going to have quite a bit of painting to do. Now the Lizard scheme may look simple. However, it has several layers and masking shapes over paint, stuck on foam. Well, let's just say that I'm keeping my fingers crossed not to pull off the previous layer when trying to reveal the most recent one. I have done a test with the same kind of paint on one of my old Multiplex Stuntmasters, which are built using the same foam. The Stuntmaster, by the way, a really great plane to fly. And so far, tests have shown it to hold up okay. But we'll see if I'm still smiling at the end of this video. If you're wondering why I would go through all this trouble, well, so am I. But it sounds like a cool idea, so let's get straight to it. First step was, of course, to pick up a fun jet and get it put together. Now, I had planned on doing a build video. However, it's literally a case of joining the wings, gluing the rudders in and installing the two servos in the wings. So here's a quick montage of that build. Then we can get straight into the fun, the paint job. I started by assembling the control horn linkages while making sure that everything can still rotate freely. Then opened up the aileron gap and glued in the control horn. Next, center the servo, figure out which one of the four arms is going to be my servo arm, make sure it's centered and install the servo. Glue on the servo cover and we've got the wings done. Push through the wing tube, assemble the wings and glue everything in place using plenty of cyanide and kicker. Little tip, wipe off the excess cyanide with a rag before using the accelerator for a really clean smooth joint. Apply Cyano into the rudder slots and install them as well. As we're going to be using the Funjet vector system, we need to split the rear hatch so we can use the rear part to secure the motor while still being able to remove the front section to gain access to the vector servos. Next up, we cut slots for the clips that keep the rear and front hatches in place. Take your time, get the measurements right, a nice fit will save a lot of headaches later on. And that's the build done. Time to get with the fun part, making the fun jet look like my SAB Lizard. Now to do this, I'm going to be using solvent-based acrylic paints. Now, normally that would eat any kind of foam. However, Multiplex use a very special blend of foam, which allows you to do that. So if you're ever gonna do anything like this at home, just make sure that it doesn't react in any way. Test it out on another piece of foam somewhere. You don't want your brand new plane melting away. Now, I couldn't find a nice yellow in the same kind of tin that I usually use, so I had to go with a spray can. Otherwise, I would have three paint tubs exactly the same. Either way, I've tested them out, they all work. So let's get masking and then get painting. Nobody likes masking, however, Taking it off and revealing the end product is always worth it. So take your time, make sure to leave no gaps and just cover up absolutely everything. At the moment, as we don't have any paint on yet at all, we're going to be quite liberal with the tape. After all, there's no risk of lifting off any paint yet. Just before we start, it's really important not to get the spray can too close to the foam. 
it may still burn it as it is a solvent based paint and also the closer it is the more pressure is still coming out of the can and that can blow our masking and papers away so we need to keep it a little bit further apart so that only the paint is arriving at the plane not so much of that pressure which is going to try and open our masks up hopefully we can avoid any kind of bleeding apply a number of layers until you achieve the result that you desire don't try and cover it all in one thick coat And now the fun part, taking all the masking away to see that everything's worked out perfectly. Nice, crisp, clean lines, white on top, yellow underneath. Now time to do the other way around. Cover up what we've painted, and paint the other side. This time, as the tape is going on top of previously dried paint, we are going to be a lot more careful with the amount that we use. Trying to always put tape on top of other tape rather than on top of the paint. And time to paint the next layer, this time grey on top. Back to demasking to reveal a two-tone plane. And again, really nice clean lines. Beautiful. Now time to add some detailing. Off to the computer and the vinyl cutter. Time for some masks. Lots of masks. I marked out which part went where, just to try and make it easier on myself, as this particular design, each mask is basically comprised of two masks, a yellow part and a black part, but you'll see that in a moment. Then just a case of applying everything where we want it all to go. All the tape on top of the mask is actually the second half of the mask, which we'll be using for the second colour. So we're covering it up so we don't have any bleeding in between the two different coloured masks. Now we've got the main masks on, it's time to cover up all the gaps. And then some paint. Keeping it light to avoid lifting up any of that masking. Once again, the trick is multiple layers. Thinking it through, you want to make sure that you know what colours need to go when and if you need to make any fine detailing work before lifting off any of those masks, as was the case here. 
just a little bit of shadowing behind the canopy at what is normally a turbine entrance. And time to see exactly how it's gone. Now we're going to remove the second half of the mask and cover up the first part that we've already painted. That way we can do our second colour, in our case black. And the grand reveal Looking good, looking good. Looking like a lizard. Uh, oh, that's not supposed to happen. And the same on the other side, I'm going to cover up what we've just painted, remove the second part of the mask of the part that we haven't, and fill it in with black. You can see me using a knife there just to prevent any of that masking from lifting up. Oh no. No. And we're lifting some of the paint up. Not good. More demasking. That's not good. Why did I, why did I even start this? Why shouldn't, why didn't I just? Yeah, well, um, that didn't work, did it? Now, we're gonna call this video it for now, while I figure out what the heck I can do to fix this mess. At the moment, I'm thinking one of two options. Either try and freehand airbrush over the whole mess, or paint the whole sodding thing black. Either way, that's gonna to have to wait for the next video. Now, for anyone who was watching this and hoping, A, for a great result, as I was, and then hoping to replicate this at home, Aside from the obvious of don't do this, I will point out that having looked at it closely, I do actually kind of know what went wrong. I have painted planes like this before and I've never had an issue. The problem was when I painted the grey, rather than doing it the way I always have done, which is with an airbrush, which takes quite a while because it's quite a large surface, I painted it as if I was painting one of my jets with the big gun. The problem is that lays on way too much paint. That leaves quite a thick layer, quite a thick skin, and then the result is obvious. So if I were to do it again, A, I'd think twice, <laughs> but no. Seriously, I'm quite sure that if you lay it on thinner, you'd be okay. And my only mistake here really was laying it on too thick. So parting thoughts, Normally I would say I hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I did. Not this time, but either way, leave us a like, come on, we need the love. Subscribe if you aren't already, see how we fix this mess, and I'll see you all in the next one. At least the underside still looks cool, right? I'm Martin Pickering and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this one. Subscribing is always, always free and just means that YouTube shows you my latest videos once uploaded and you won't miss out. So hit that subscribe button now. While at it, why not check out my super cool new lineup of t-shirt designs like this one. 
all available in my online merch store with worldwide shipping. With several designs and colours to choose between, I'm sure that you'll love at least one of them. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.